Hell of a sight, ain't it? You know, when I first come to this town, it was nothing more than a backwater shithole. Now look at it. Let me see your hands. Whatever was between us is over, you understand? It ended the second it was you coming up them stairs instead of my son. You want a drink? All right. I had this imported from Scotland. <laughs> Single malt. Now, usually I'm a bourbon man, but I figured I'd order something with a little more class for when the casino opened. Not much of a chance of that happening now, is it? Don't look that way. Take a seat. I ain't going nowhere. Hey, not bad. I think I still prefer shine. You know, a month or so after my brother Lucho died, I started having nightmares. I had this one where I was on a boat. A giant wave come, knock my ass overboard. I hit that water and sink like a goddamn rock. There was another one where cotton mouths biting me all to hell. But the one that really got to me was Georgie's funeral. He's laid out in that shitty little casket. Neck cut, same as Lucho's. Yeah, that one really got to me. It'll come around again every three or four days. That one where I'm back in Nam, sleeping in a foxhole. All of a sudden, these dark figures come out of the shadows. I try to fight them off, but they hold me down, tie my hands together, stuff a muddy rag in my mouth so I can't scream, can't warn the men sleeping next to me. And then I got to listen as all those men die. Imagine that's not gonna go away anytime soon. No. I imagine it won't. And then this. <laughs> this was all to try to keep mine from coming true. Look how that turned out. I buried a lot of people. More than I can count. The one I never wanted to see go down in that cold ground was my son. And yet here we are. Yes, sir. Here we are. My son is dead. And I'm having a drink with his killer. I'm not gonna apologize for what I did, you understand? If I did, I'd just be lying. I don't have it in me to feel shame for the things I've done to others. Never have. Didn't come here for an apology. Nah. I know you did. Goddamn, I was right about you, wasn't I? <laughs> I knew it the second I fucking saw you at the country club. Men like us, we're just wired up wrong. There's only one thing we know. One thing we're good at. I'm gonna be waiting for you, Lincoln Clay. This won't be the last time we see each other. I know. waiting for. Fucking do it. Finish this, you fucking coward. You just gonna fucking stand there? Fuck you. Fuck you!
I take it you're Lincoln Clay. So they tell me. I told Sal this fucking casino would be the end of him. I meant it figuratively. This shit has a way of turning on you, doesn't it? Especially if you piss off the wrong person. <laughs> you know who I am, son? Guessing you're Leo Galanti. Take a little walk, you and me. Probably no surprise, but the rest of the commission wants you dead. You and anybody else that had anything to do with this. What happened here was between me and Marcano. Well, I understand that, son. We all do. But this business makes you paranoid, irrational. They see Sally a pile of shit. They start wondering if someone's gonna serve them a plate of their own. So you're here to decide if you're coming after me? No. I'm here to deliver a message. You made your point, son. This all ends right here. Right now. I got no quarrel with y'all. Once a month, Sal kicked up 20% of his net cash only. Same man's been delivering it for, oh, I don't know, 40 years or so. I see no need in deviating from that, do you? No, sir. Well, in exchange, you run things as you see fit. Want to sell heroin, want a whorehouse on every other corner? Makes no fucking difference to me. The only thing that matters is 20%. And what if I decide to walk away? Leave all this behind? Then this will be the last time we see each other. Best of luck to you, son. Is he dead? Yeah, he's dead. Him and Georgie both. <laughs> it's the best news I've heard in ages. Can we get an amen, Padre? So what happens now? What do you mean, what happens now? It's over, done, finished. I ain't talking to you. Just cause Sal Marcano's dead, Lincoln, doesn't mean it's over. Now what you did and the size of it all, you created a storm in this here city, and it's gonna take a long time for it to dissipate, if it ever does. With Marcano dead, New Bordeaux belongs to me. Ain't nobody left to stand in my way. <laughs> you, you can't be serious. The, the point of this wasn't to replace Marcano, it was to remove him. This city's done gone through enough. It doesn't need another you, Sal Marcano. You, this city? You've got to be fucking kidding me. This city is a cesspool. It's where people come to fuck and drink and get high. You watch your filthy mouth. It's what the city is, Padre. If it's not giving another Sal Marcano, it's going to shit one out. He's right. If it ain't going to be me, it's going to be somebody else. Probably somebody worse. Amen. Thank you. You remember what you told me when you came back from the war? How, how, how you wanted to, to, to go to California? Leave all this behind? 
and just start all over? Yeah. Man. Yeah. Well, it ain't too late, Lincoln. You can still go. Go. And don't look back. Listen, I'd love to stay here and debate the merits of one crime boss over another, but I've got a schedule to keep. Bit of advice, though? The scumbags you've been working with, kill them. All of them. Bury them before they bury you, buddy. Oh. I'll be seeing you, Padre. God forgive me for standing by you through all this. But if you do anything except leave, we're finished. You hear? Fuck. A man's soul can only carry so much. And mine is on the verge of breaking. After Lincoln Clay vanished, Thomas Burke assumed control of the city. According to his daughter, Burke's liver was riddled with cancer. He should have lived maybe, oh, what, another six months. But that selfish bastard used the money Lincoln left him to go to Mexico and get a black market transplant. And then he hung around for another 16 years. Now, he flooded the city with booze, then expanded into drugs, first heroin, then cocaine. He used the same infrastructure he'd set up for moonshining, and within a year or so, most of the cocaine entering the country came through here. Anyway, um, <laughs> Burke was one of the wealthiest men in the southern United States. Hell, he bought himself a seat on the city council and got the township's name legally changed to Bourbon City. But all that cocaine attracted other criminals, and Burke went to war with the Cuban gang. Um, shootouts in the streets, uh, car bombs, a brothel burned to the ground. When the Cubans called him out, Burke came, armed with an M60 and grenades. He killed eight men before they put him down, and that was uh, 1984. And since then, no one has sat on the throne for more than a few months. The city is still a lawless fool's paradise. After Sam Arcano's death, Lincoln Clay disappeared. <laughs> the Bureau deprioritized the investigation after a few months, but uh, I keep an active file. In 1971, I tracked him to a California shipyard where he was working under an assumed name. By the time we got there, though, he was gone. The trail went cold, and by 77, 78, I figured he was dead. But then I got a report of someone matching his description working with the Colombians. Since then, uh, there's a new sighting of him every couple of years. Lincoln made it out to California, worked at the shipyards for a few years, met him a woman. <laughs> Seemed like he was gonna get married, but and it, it all came apart. Don't know why. And he started moving around. He went to Alaska, New York, South America. He even went back to Vietnam. Hmm. 
I still get postcards from time to time. You know, I think Lincoln wasn't able to uh, accept the world for what it is or his place in it. Someday, he's going to get tired of running or make a mistake, and I'll be waiting. I promise you that. Let me ask you something. Senator! Where were you when John Fitzgerald Kennedy was assassinated? I don't remember. At home, I believe. I don't remember. At home, I believe. Let me tell you where I was. A muddy hut in Vietnam. Slowly dismembering an old woman, cutting her apart bit by bit. And do you know why? Because her son was an NVA officer. And hurting her was the only way to make him talk. I don't understand what this has to do with... What he told with... us saved the lives of an entire platoon. That's 42 men. Men that lived another day because I was willing to take a saw to that old woman. Thank you, Mr. Donovan. I believe that... Sit down and just shut the fuck up! I did a lot of terrible shit over there. In the name of this country. Shit that will haunt me for the rest of my life. But I did it because I believed in the fight. I believed what this nation stood for. So... To be sitting there, ass deep in mud, with that old woman scattered all around me. And hearing that the President of the United States had just been fucking murdered? Well, I knew right then and there that I couldn't let that stand. That I would find a way to make it right, no matter how long it took. What are you saying? I'm saying that Sal Marcano and a group of conspirators murdered Jack Kennedy. Oh, that is the most absurd thing I have ever heard. I assume you no! say that. Don't fucking move! This... You're out of your mind. Oh, if you... I don't hold anyone's ambitions against them, Senator. And you certainly were ambitious, weren't you? You went to law school, and then you became a district attorney, and then... United States Senate. After Sal Marcano died, I went through his file. Imagine my surprise when I saw your name over and over and over and over again. The mob wanted Jack Kennedy dead, and you were more than willing to help. There are cameras everywhere. There's witnesses. No, I want you them never to get away with this, you stupid asshole. No. Because then they will know that I am not finishing with you. I am starting with you. Stop! Oh. 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 And they're next. <laughs> Gentlemen. Get out God, of here. Quick. 